If you're expecting it to replace your phone, it won't, and it shouldn't. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan, CEO of Nada. Welcome to the first episode of my CEO video review series. In this series, I'll be taking you on an in-depth exploration of some interesting new hardware from the perspective of a founder and tech enthusiast. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the Rabbit R1, this little bright orange device. Since its release, it has received mixed reviews, but to be honest, most of those reviews are based on short-term use, whereas I've actually been using it as a daily tool for several weeks. As someone who is also an entrepreneur in the AI field, I wanna share some more genuine thoughts from the perspective of a product builder. I'm not sure if you've been following the recent developments in the AI hardware field, but Humane's AI pin has received poor market feedback, and many people are starting to question whether the direction of dedicated AI devices has already failed. However, the R1 has already sold over 100,000 units and continues to receive weekly updates. So, what's really happening behind the scenes? Essentially, the R1 attempts to separate AI interaction from smartphones, turning it into a more focused, standalone device. It's compact in size, features a striking orange design, and is built on a technology architecture called LAM, which stands for Large Action Model. The price is $199 with no additional subscription fees. The concept is very straightforward. You speak, it acts. First of all, its hardware is very solidly built. It feels great in the hand, and it has a slightly retro style. More importantly, the software updates come at a very fast pace. When it was first released, the battery life was only about four hours, but now it can easily last an entire day of use. What I find most interesting is LAM Playground. I can teach it to complete some fairly complex web tasks, such as regularly checking if the games I follow are on sale or automating certain research processes, like studying competitors. Okay, it's not perfect yet, but you can already see its practicality. Teach mode is another feature that I really appreciate. You don't need to describe your requirements abstractly. Instead, you just demonstrate the process to the AI directly. For example, posting a tweet or adding an item to the shopping cart, the AI can learn and replicate the entire process. This approach is more controllable and reliable than relying entirely on the model's own improvisation. Another thing is that its magic camera is really interesting. It's not just simple object recognition, it often gives some creative descriptions as well. A lot of people on the team also enjoy playing with it. For example, when you take a photo, it can turn the picture into a comic style, which everyone really likes. In addition, the device also has a built-in light gamification feature called Arcade. By using the device frequently and accumulating carrot points, you can unlock new virtual rabbit avatars. Although it may sound a bit silly and simple, it does actually encourage people to use the device more. Of course, there are also some features I haven't tested in depth, such as voice transcription. After all, Nota specializes in this area, so I want to remain as objective as possible. However, from an industry peer's perspective, their iterations have shown clear progress. Of course, there are also drawbacks at this stage. Sometimes the LM can smoothly help us order food, but other times it makes mistakes. Its performance is unstable, much like an intern still in training. Also, there aren't many officially supported apps yet, only about a dozen or so. But what many people hardly mention is that Rabbit releases updates almost every two weeks. Since its launch, there have already been 16 major version updates, and this level of execution is commendable. So everyone always asks, why not just use a smartphone? But the core value of the R1 lies precisely in its focus. It has no notifications, no social distractions. You're collaborating with a purely AI-driven interface. It's worth mentioning that OS 2.0 has already entered internal testing. According to the information released so far, this version will support memory functions and full screen operation, and will introduce a new feature called Rabbit OS Intern. It is designed to act as a true AI intern, capable of assisting with tasks such as generating programming reports, creating presentations, and even managing more complex multi-step tasks. Currently, this feature is available for free trial, and R1 users can perform up to nine tasks per day. This is a very pragmatic and bold direction for development, and it shows us that dedicated AI hardware can take on many more forms. As a fellow founder engaged in AI product development, I have a few thoughts to share. First, their execution is admirable. In just one year, they've gone from being almost unusable to gradually functional. This is exactly the pace that hardware startups should have. Many companies don't even make it to this stage. Second, their vision isn't to become a replacement for smartphones, but to define a new scenario, a dedicated, distraction-free AI companion. In today's world where attention is scarce, this approach is very clear-headed. Third, their business model is also quite bold. A one-time purchase, no subscriptions, and no misuse of data. 
What I appreciate even more is that they are seriously laying the groundwork for the future. LM technology, agent architecture, and frequent hardware updates. This is exactly how hardware AI should be developed. I'm also aware that currently only about 5% of users use the R1 every day. It's normal for early adapters to have low usage rates. The first generation iPhone went through a similar phase, but what we should really focus on is the trend. Since its launch, user activity has actually increased by 40%, battery life complaints have dropped by 80%, and the community is steadily growing. These are all positive signs. So is it worth buying? If you're expecting it to replace your phone, it won't, and it shouldn't. But if you're interested in the direction AI hardware is heading and want to experience a brand new way of interacting, then the R1 is an honest, interesting, and rapidly evolving option. I see it as version 0.5 of an AI companion device. It's not mature yet, but it has a solid foundation, and the team is continuously delivering updates. From a founder's perspective, I appreciate this step-by-step -step iteration and the approach of focusing on long-term goals. A piece of hardware that improves every week with no hidden costs and a $200 entry point, I'm willing to recommend it to those who are eager to explore. So at the end of the day, it's a lot of fun and sometimes being interesting is a value in itself. Okay, thank you all for watching my first review. I'll continue to share more genuine product experiences from the perspective of a tech enthusiast and entrepreneur. If you're interested in AI or AI hardware, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what kind of devices you'd like me to review. 